Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Al YouTube channel and it is time for challenge number three in my Shop Your Stash September challenge series. I hope you'll stick around, find out what the new challenge is, see what I'm going to create, and find out how you can play along. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. I have really been enjoying challenging myself to use what I have and get creative this month. I hope that you've been enjoying it as well. I have started to see some of your creations roll in and I cannot wait to share them all next month. Now, if you don't know about my Shop Your Stash September series, I'll tell you just a little bit about it and then later on in the video, I'll give you some more details, including how you can play along. This month, I cannot spend any money on crafty things, and I know that we all have so much already that we can use what we have and get creative. So I've been stopping by with little challenges for myself and you to see how we can stretch those supplies. If you want to check out the previous challenges in the series, I do have the playlist linked below. So far there have been two others, and I hope to come back with about 5 to 10 total this month. The newest challenge, challenge number three, is called On Repeat. I want you to use a stamp set from your stash and use one image from it, two images from it, all of the images from it, and create a repeating background, kind of like creating your own pattern paper, and then make a new project. Now today I will be making a card, but you don't have to. You could make a decor piece, a tag, put it on a mini album, you just have to follow that challenge prompt of on repeat. In front of me are the main supplies that I'll be using today. If I do add anything later, I'll let you know, but as always, you can leave any questions in that comment section below. I pre-selected a rainbow of Gina K Designs inks, and I got out her ornamental fan stencil. You'll notice here I have my blending brushes, which I just use them from the Dollar Tree. And for my stamp set, this was one I bought recently at a used stamp sale at a local scrapbook store. And it is Color My World by W Plus 9 Designs. Now I did go ahead and pre-place my stamps that I'm going to use onto a large stamp block. I did test it a little bit off screen just to make sure it's stamped okay. And then I will be stamping today on a piece of Strathmore Bristol Smooth that is four by five and a quarter. Let's get crafty. Before we get to the process, I do have a special channel member shout out. I would like to say thank you and welcome to Paper Trimmer Level Membership to Ashlyn Doust. Thank you so much, Ashlyn, for your support. If you're interested in finding out more about the perks of channel membership, I do have a link in the description box below. To get started on today's card, I'm going to be repeat stamping the background, and I will be using Versafine Onyx Black ink for this. Now you'll notice behind my piece of Bristol Smooth, I put a piece of typing paper, and that is just to catch the excess ink. I realized in the past that this pad that I use for my clear stamps, it acts kind of like a sponge with that ink, and it never dries. So this just keeps me from getting ink all over my fingers and onto my projects. You'll notice there I just keep stamping, I ink up the stamp and rotate it for the next image, and then I go back in and fill in the corners and the edges with partial images. I do this until it's pretty much filled up and I like the way that it looks. I did go ahead and hit this piece with my heat tool off camera just to make sure the ink was nice and dry before I moved on to the blending. 
I will be doing ink blending actually twice on this background. The first one is just a pretty straightforward rainbow from top to bottom. And I want to start with the lightest ink, which also happens to be the one in the center. I do usually like to try to start in the center just so I kind of know how much area I have to work with. So I start by inking a band across the center with the yellow and I like to build this up just kind of lightly putting it on at first and just building up that ink. I do switch colors and then between those I'll go back with the previous brush to kind of help blend that in. But because this is probably something you have seen before, I thought it would be a great time to tell you a little bit more about the challenge. I would love you to join me this month in these challenges and create with what you have. And you can do this in three simple steps, which I will explain now. The first thing that you'll do is create a new project following today's challenge using only items from your stash. Then you're going to upload a photo of that project using the form linked in the description box below. And finally, you can sit back and enjoy the recap video in October. I do ask that you create a separate project for each challenge. And please, even if you're super inspired by a single challenge and create more than one project, please just choose your favorite to upload. When you photograph your project, rectangle landscape photos are the best and make sure to send them at a nice quality. And just a heads up that even though my watermark will not be on your photo, I will not have time to add your name or YouTube username. So if you would like to do that, please do that ahead of time. And here in just a second, I'll show you a quick way that you can do that. Once your project photo is ready for uploading, you will need to use the specific form for the challenge. Each challenge will have a new form linked, so make sure when you're uploading that the challenge number or name at the top of the form matches the challenge that you're submitting for. If you do want to add your name to your photo, it doesn't have to be anything fancy or require any special software. Most mobile devices and laptops or computers will allow you to open a photo and add a text box to it. Then you would just save this and upload it to the form. Speaking of the form, an example is up on screen now and you will want to make sure that you fill out each individual section. You will enter your YouTube username, your first name, your email address and the email address is only if I would need to contact you with a question and I will not be retaining these after this month's challenge. You will then let me know how you follow the challenge. In this example, it would be what kit you used. Then I need you to agree to let me use the photo in the October video. And finally, you're going to upload the photo from your computer and submit it. You will want to make sure that you see this screen that says you have submitted it before closing out your window. All photos will be due by midnight central time on October 10th. I am looking forward to seeing what you create this month and hope that you'll join me. When I was too far into my blending where I didn't have any room for my fingers without getting them inky, you'll notice here I just use a sticky note to hold on to it. Once I had down the first layer of color, I brought in the Gina K Design stencil and adhered that to my card using a couple pieces of blue painter's tape that I just keep around my craft room for this purpose. I then used those same ink colors and re-blended them in the same order and tried to stick to the same place as that first layer. But this time it was through the stencil. Now while I work on that, I thought it would be a great time to stop by with the QOTV or question of the video. Today's question comes once again from channel member Karen C. And we would like to know, how often do you craft or make cards in a week? 
you can let us know in that comment section below and don't forget to include the hashtag hashtag QOTV so we know that you've answered it and would like us to see it for myself I would say I average about four days a week where I craft or make cards now I'm probably in my studio more often than that but that would be editing videos and designing stuff but yes I do get to come down here pretty often and get crafty and now it's time for the big reveal. What I like about this two-step stenciling where I layer the color and the stencils is the background isn't a stark white in the openings. For my sentiment, I'm using the same stamp set and it reads, You Color My World. I am going to be doing some water coloring with the same inks as before. So once again, I use that VersaFine Onyx Black and stamp this onto a scrap of Strathmore Bristol Smooth. Now there are five openings or five letters in the word color, and that is why I chose five colors for my rainbow, because now when I go to do my coloring, I will have one color for each letter. This is a really easy way to add color. My palette that I use is just a piece of laminated cardstock. I dab just a tiny bit of the color onto that piece and then pick it up with my water brush. Now when I go to color, I do want some areas that are a little bit darker. So I start with the color on the top and bottom of the C and then kind of blend those into the center. Now I will add later on, once it has dried, a little bit more color at the top and bottom, just once again so there's a little bit of shading on there. I do clean off the brush between each color of ink and then I just color until all the letters are filled and then at the end I can just take that same paper towel and clean off my palette and reuse it later. I let this dry for about 10 minutes and then I brought in my little photo trimmer and I cut it down so there was an even white border all the way around the sentiment. I did a little cutting off camera. I made a mat for my sentiment. I cut a piece of white cardstock for the inside and I made a black card base. I started adhering everything together and of course my ATG ran out of adhesive, but I just fixed that quickly and started adhering the pieces. The sentiment got matted with the black card stock and I placed the ink blended just flat onto the front of the card. And then just for a little added dimension, I brought in my big blue roll of foam tape in the 3 quarters inch width and I added two pieces to the back of the sentiment and then this got popped up in the lower right hand corner of the card front. To finish my card off, I got out my little clear dew drops and I added some to the front of the card with my art glitter glue. Now here on camera, I added three of the large ones, but off camera, I ended up adding a few more and you'll see that on the close up here in a little bit. But something else I did off camera was I stamped on the white piece of cardstock on the inside using that paint palette stamp from before. I inked it up with a pink ink, stamped it off, and then stamped it onto the cardstock. And here's a look at the finished card. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I put together today's card. If you did, as always, I appreciate a thumbs up. I hope that you'll join me in the on repeat challenge. And until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.